Okay, so this is a 2018 uh, L5P. Um, we're setting up emissions on tuning on this thing, and we've been doing uh, just a bunch of them, but we wanted to talk about some of the issues that we come across and the challenges that we face during emissions on uh, emissions on tuning on uh, turbo diesels, and more specifically, like the late model turbo diesels. So this truck, uh, we're setting up at about 120 horsepower overstock um, tune. And so we're you know, doing some road testing and road logging um, after Cala. every single truck goes through this process that we do here live. And one of the most important pieces uh, on a diesel with emissions on it is how much air can the motor process per how much fuel does the motor ingest. So a turbo diesel, as we've discussed many times before, is a fuel-based motor. <clears throat> There are no throttles on a diesel. It is, it, the, the air box is subjected to ambient air pressure outside and um, the, the, however much air the motor can ingest, it uses and combines with fuel. So it injects fuel and uses the air that it has at, uh, at its disposal. Uh, and it increases uh, volumetric efficiency via the usage of a turbocharger on most diesels like an L5P. So this particular truck, we're doing some road testing and Kenny, if you can zoom in here real quick. We know that on our 120 horsepower tunes, oftentimes, if you can see the math in grams per second, we know on our 120 horsepower tunes and actually a pretty good running L5P at 100 horsepower and above, we know that they'll process about safely about 480 grams per second. So if you see as we scroll through this log, 420 grams per second of air, um, so that's a shift, but 420 grams per second of air is about all we can get out of this thing. And so as a tuner, our responsibility is to know the health of the truck before we tune it. This, we wanted to note this as an example of the health of the truck in the as found condition. This truck as, um, as RPM goes up, the ECM has to make a decision on how much air we can combine with the amount of fuel to achieve a stoichiometric value inside the ECM of a pretty lean mixture um, so we don't soot the DPF full um, and we don't cause a lot of excess knock, uh, a NOx, N-O-X. Um, and what happens is when the air filters are pretty dirty, the differential pressure created across the, the air filter, this is a perfectly clean one, the differential pressure created between here, which is barometric pressure, and on a day like today, it's 14.1 pounds of absolute pressure, and the pressure on the other side, so this would be vacuum, um, created by the turbocharger, the higher the differential pressure is across this uh, air filter, the harder the turbocharger has to work in terms of how far down do the turbocharger vanes have to close to get the right amount of air into the ECM to create a optimum stoichiometric value. We measure it in terms of lambda. So a lot of times these trucks will run down the road extremely lean, like a lambda of uh, approaching 2.0, um, or that's an air fuel ratio of above 60 to 70 to 1. And when we roll into the gas, and in fact, when we pre approach full throttle operation, what happens is the, 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 the truck has to achieve a, a quite a bit richer mixture, and we approach into 25, 24 to 1. And we have to be really careful with the DPF because the DPF has to uh, eat the unbut, unburnt fuel um, and, and the particulate matter. So we have to be extremely careful with that. So this truck. Um, we notice that it can't hit really a very high uh, grams per second. In fact, as RPM goes up, turbocharger vane position starts to ramp up to try to hit desired, the desired boost value. And boost and grams per second of airflow are completely different things. Boost is a measure of restriction across the engine, and grams per second of airflow is a measurement of how, how much, if you can come over here, Kenny, how much air this sensor which is the MAF sensor is measuring. And a MAF sensor is just a uh, zero to five volt reference. Airflow comes across the MAF and it cools the, uh, the wires down and that the, the change in resistance to metal per the change in um, voltage, that's how we determine how much air comes across it. So more air, it cools it down. The resistance of the metal 
uh, goes down so the voltage on the other side of the math, the, the side that's being measured back to the ECM goes up. That means that hey we're processing more air. So boost is completely different. They're interrelated but different than how much air the motor's actually inhaling. So this has a stock size MAF on it and we notice that we just really aren't processing the type of air that this motor should be um, based upon the hundreds literally that we've tuned. Um, so we're like well better inspect. So I've already pulled this air filter out uh, as you can see by the bugs. Um, but this is what this guy looks like. Come out of the factory box and it is full of you know this is Nebraska so corn and and bugs and I mean it is literally matted you can't even separate it but it's full all the way around um, so the differential pressure across this filter is probably pretty high compared to when we stick this guy in here it's going to be pretty low so the factory filters do a pretty darn good job at filtering um, in fact they're pretty good when they're brand new at keeping the DP low across this thing to, so we can process more air flow through the motor. Um, there's other components that can you can increase by going to like a foam filter or something else. Um, like AFE makes a pretty good one. SMBs is okay to try to, to increase airflow across this guy. Um, so we can process more air with less turbocharger input. So we're gonna put this filter in. Uh, we're gonna retest, but that's kind of the thing uh, to note associated with emissions on tuning and keeping your DPF extremely clean. The cleaner this guy is, the cleaner the DPF, as long as the calibration is proper, as long as we achieve a really clean mixture. But the cleaner this is, the cleaner the DPF is uh, overall. Okay, so we put the air filter in uh, this 2018 L5P, uh, Mission Dawn truck. We didn't do anything other than um, tune um, the truck initially, log data uh, based upon how the, uh, we found the truck in the as-found condition and replaced the air filter and then went for another drive uh, without changing anything because um, we wanted to show um, what we were talking about how um, when you have an air filter that's that dirty how uh, it can impact the emissions on these late model turbo diesel trucks and without going into the complications that that EGR and incoming air load uh, and how they affect the MAF, we're just going to go back to the same exact numbers that we were on before. Um, how much air that this motor is processing per unit time and um, at what boost level and how hard the turbocharger has to work to make that happen. So uh, this is a, a dad log. I just went and drove the, um, drove the truck. And again, we kind of know, we, we already know where these trucks are going to hit for numbers based upon all the dyno time that we spent with these. But if you can see the math in grams per second and engine RPM, if you watch as we come across this plot, we never really got above 500 or 410 to 20 grams per second air before. And now when we come across the plot, um, we're substantially above that. Uh, and we're going to hit 500 for just a moment in time and this is a pretty good running, uh, this is a healthy tune um, but uh, the end result, there's our 500, I just saw it so as you see we're at a little higher boost number because the turbo doesn't have to work as hard per given turbocharger vein position we're at a little lower vein position overall and a lower turbo vein position putting less back pressure on the motor uh, we call that turbocharger drive pressure or exhaust drive pressure. Uh, the more that we bottle up between the turbocharger and the exhaust valve outlet, the, the less power that we can actually make out of this truck. So the name of the game is to drive the turbo with the least amount of effort, making the most amount of airflow on a turbo diesel. Uh, a little different in gas burners, diesels with no throttles, uh, the name of the game is to process as much air as we can per given unit of fuel. These things run extremely lean. Um, so there's some lambda limiters in here that I want to talk briefly about um, because they're a little bit better than they were before. So this motor is making 66.29 pounds mass of minute of, of airflow. And that's substantial. On the dyno, we would see this tune at about 540 rear wheel horsepower um, 
where before we could barely get it to make five, uh, 59 uh, pounds mass a minute. So we really wouldn't have even had a 500 horsepower motor before uh, to, the, to the tires. Um, it's substantial because this, this whole thing, not only is it running cleaner now, uh, so less particulate matter being uh, having to be uh, chewed up by the DPF, uh, we also run with a lower NOx. And some of our users might ask, well, how is the NOx, the NOx output, um, lower when we're making more horsepower? Well, NOx is just a byproduct of excess oxygen running through uh, these motors. Since again, they don't have a throttle, uh, they run with an extremely large amount of excess oxygen. And the excess oxygen in the compression ignition circuit that the turbo diesels run in, um, they end up literally crushing another oxygen uh, molecule onto the NO2 that we already have, uh, making NO3, which doesn't break down by the environment. So that's a byproduct of combustion heat. And since this turbo now doesn't have to work nearly as hard as it did before, the discharge temperature, and if you could just zoom in, Kenny, this discharge air temperature, uh, 278 degrees. And the charge air temperature coming into the motor is 55 degrees. Uh, when the air filter was dirty and we had to run a lot of vane position and had to work the turbo extremely hard, a lot of that enthalpy or that heat, it drove charge air uh, turbocharger outlet temperature uh, up into the mid 300s and that um, heat has to be removed by the intercooler section in the front of the truck and the harder we work the intercooler the higher the resulting outlet temperature is and that outlet temperature is fed into the motor and with higher combustion heat and higher charge air temperature we end up with a higher NOx and the higher the NOx, and that's measured in PPM here, the higher this NOx value, the more we have to run not only EGR, but also urea or SCR to, to dose the truck and try to control it. So the cleaner we can keep the intake track on these turbo diesels, the lower, the least amount of EGR we'll have to run uh, because we have lower NOx and the least amount of temperature this intercooler has to soak up um, uh, and it makes just you know the motor not have to consume nearly as much uh, DAF or urea uh, to do the same amount of work as it would before so uh, keep your air filters extremely clean and it'll help your truck go uh, a long way just in this particular application